Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another day at BS for Build. In today's episode, we're gonna be installing the side skirts on the GTR and our Liberty Walk wide body kit on the GTR. Now, a lot of stuff goes into installing a wide body kit on a car, but some of it's already been done for us because this car originally came with a wide body kit. That's why some of the fenders have been cut out. But we're gonna go into uh, why the fenders are cut out, how to waterproof it, seal your car up so it will last a long time with a wide body kit. I've got wide body cars that I've had for years and years and years, so I'll go into the, kind of the detail of that and how to install one the right way. Stay tuned. Before I get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Cove Speakers. This little bad boy right here is the Cove Commuter. It is my absolute favorite Bluetooth speaker. This thing is amazing. When I first turned it on, I was really blown away by the sound quality. It's got great, great, great sound quality, and that's partly because of this subwoofer that it has in the bottom. So unlike most Bluetooth speakers where you're just kind of getting the highs and a little bit of the mids, you also get the low range sound with this speaker as well. It's a rechargeable battery speaker, uh, so it'll last you up to eight hours on each charge. I have very good luck with these. I seem to get way over eight hours, but it's guaranteed up to eight hours. It's a Bluetooth speaker, so it'll connect up to your phone, uh, your tablet, or your PC. It's fantastic, I love the size of it too. If you happen to have a car kind of like my 240Z that maybe ha doesn't have a stereo, my car doesn't have a stereo, it fits in the cup holder. So you can just slide this baby right in your cup holder, take it for a road trip or something like that. It can also uh, be doubles as a speakerphone. You can use it, it's got a little microphone right here. You can use it for conference calls and things like that. These things are durable, they're very portable. We have this playing music here in our shop and we also have one in the paint booth. And you guys have seen the abuse that the paint booth has taken recently and that speaker has taken it all and keeps on ticket. I, I love these things. They're a great, great product and you can get yours now. Use the link in the description. It's covespeakers.com slash build. Use code build and you'll get 65% off of your purchase on these things. Guys, if you're in the market for Bluetooth speaker or like I said, if your car doesn't have a stereo, pick one of these up. You will not regret it. All right, let's get down to work. So getting started on a wide body kit, one of the first things that you need to do is cut your fenders. Now, like I mentioned, this car has been wide body before. That's why you see that the rear fenders here are cut and the front are cut as well. It's a question I get emailed to me a lot. Do you have to cut your car? If you're doing an aggressive style kit like a Liberty Walk or a Rocket Bunny, yes, you have to cut your fenders. And that's a stopping point for a lot of people. So that one's been done already. Let's walk over to the side that hasn't been done. As you guys remember, we replaced this rear quarter panel, so it hasn't been done. But what I did do is I built the inner fender, the, the inner skin to be up higher on purpose so it's kind of up here where it meets with the quarter panel that way we'd have an easier way to weld it so um, the way that I do this is I kind of come up straight from about here you're normally fine in the front I've never seen a kit where I had to cut this part so you're just trying to gain a little bit of height so that the wheel can stick out past here and then not bottom out on the on the thing so we're coming out around here up through here and you normally have to trim about two three inches off the bumper to kind of come right back around there. So you guys will see me, I'll make a marker line, I'll probably make a tape line as well because I don't want to mess up my paint, and then I'm gonna jump into cutting. All right, so I made our cut around here, and if you guys remember, this isn't really like factory because I made the inner wheel well, but you can see how we just kind of folded that stuff out so it's gonna meet up around here, and then I'm gonna jump under here with a welder and tack weld this inner skin to the outer skin, uh, and then we'll seam seal it up, and that'll be completely sealed unit. Uh, and we'll probably give it another coat of a uh, truck bed liner under there too to clean it up. On the other side, this is what it looks like a little bit more from a, on a OEM perspective. Uh, if you were doing this at home, when you cut this and then you cut through this, you're gonna have a gap about, about this large. And what they did here was made a bunch of relief cuts and folded it over and welded it to the outer quarter panel. That's a great way to do it. The only thing is they didn't kind of finish the last step, which is waterproofing inside these. So as the wheel's spinning and stuff like that, if it runs in water, I think this was a dry weather car, but either way, I wouldn't do this. It's gonna throw crap into, into your car and into your quarter panel. So I can pretty much guarantee there's gonna be a lot of junk in here, right about here. It's probably slowly, slowly, slowly trying to rust its way out, uh, but we can't get at it without cutting the whole quarter panel off. So you need to waterproof this stuff and we'll go over how to do that in a little bit. All right, I just finished throwing in the tack welds on the inner to the outer uh, quarter panel. 
Definitely burned through some paint in some areas. I'm gonna need to clean that up, make sure it does not rust, uh, but it's all good. Remember, all of this gets covered up to this line right here, so we're all good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is waterproof this thing. There's a couple different ways to go about the waterproofing. Uh, one, one way that I've seen is you could use a seam sealer, since the seam on here isn't that large, and you could seam seal all the way around. That's gonna be nice and waterproof, but it is rubbery, and if your tire hits it or anything, it's probably not gonna hold up very well. Also, it doesn't cover very large gaps, and if you guys remember over here, we got, we got some kind of sizable, sizable gaps over here. So what I'm gonna be using is a uh, short strand fiberglass reinforced body filler. This is called Bondo glass. So it's body filler reinforced with fiberglass and fiberglass resin. This isn't inherently waterproof from what I've read online. So you're gonna need to paint over this. But my recommendation is this also adds a little bit of strength and rigidity to, the, to, to what you're glassing it onto as well. So this is my recommendation to use this and then paint on top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that in here, which you're not really gonna be able to see, but then I'll do it on the other side which you can see even better. And while I'm doing that, Kyle has been working on transferring the stuff out of our damage door into our good door. So I'm gonna get you all caught up on that right now. We've got the rear end waterproof. So here's kind of what it looks like in the end. Um, it's just, you know, the fiberglass over where the holes were and a little bit of truck bed liner on top of that. Basically the same thing on both sides. Now we need to go ahead and uh, mount our side skirts. So the side skirts bolt in to all these little bolting spots right here on this plastic thing. They bolt in right here. They bolt in uh, here. And also this piece, we're gonna fix this because it got bent in the wreck. We're gonna kind of bend that back out straight so we have a good mounting point right there. And uh, get both of our side skirts mounted in because our fender flares lay over the side skirt. Update on the door. Kyle's doing a great job and almost finished. Now I was stupid and I forgot the door glass uh, at home. So we're kind of doing the install up to the point where we need to put the glass in. So Kyle's gonna kind of mount this thing up and take care of, whoops. I'm not, I'm not any help right now at all. I'm gonna walk away from that. He, he's got that under control. Well, we got the side skirt on. A uh, couple things, one, I just don't like it. The quality of it's not that good. Um, it really isn't matching up around here. It has absolutely no way of mounting, so you have to basically screw it into the car, which we did. We used some tech screws to screw it into the car. That doesn't bother me that much since it's never really seen when the door's shut and stuff like that. And then we got it in a, its mounting points over here. But here's the part that I really don't like about it. The wide body kit, it comes in and, it, and it's the, this is a stock side skirt that's been in a car accident, but uh, look at the shape of it, how it kind of dives down like that. Well, this one jumps out and then goes down and jumps out again. So where our body kit would come down, our, our fender flare would come down and kind of bolt in right here, and it needs to bolt in right about here. It creates this big gap off the body through here and through here. Also has nowhere to bolt into right here. And I could build an L bracket to secure it tightly, but I just don't like the look. So what I didn't really realize about the side skirt is that it kind of sticks off of the car uh, rather than coming in under. Uh, and that's the look that I want, is I, I want the look of it coming in under. So I don't like this side skirt and we're not gonna use it. This is the build where I'm doing things slowly, being patient, and I'm doing them exactly the way that I wanna do, which means that, uh, yeah, I wanna go to the OEM side skirts. Now the problem is, is I'm not gonna be able to get an OEM side skirt in the next like week or so. So uh, instead of stalling out the build, I'm gonna repair that one. It's actually not that bad. None of the polyurethane is really ripped until you get way past where the body kit needs to mount. So all this stuff isn't actually seen because the body kit, you can see the line where it comes down here, bolted into there. The mounting points are fine. 
It's got a little part where it was screwed into the body by the last guys. I believe I can repair that. And this is all just surface paint damage. Once you get into the polyurethane, it looks repairable. It's a new day and my game plan was to uh, fix up this side skirt right now, but I'm out of base coat so I can't repaint it. So we're just gonna go ahead and mock fit it and I'll take it off the car later and paint this and the other one. So we're gonna get moving on, uh, on fitting the fender flares. And I like to start on the, uh, the side, the rear side with the gas cap because it's a really good reference point. Now we are not mounting it with uh, riv nuts like what you see here. I don't really recommend these because they're easy to cross thread and then uh, if they start spinning on you, it's just a nightmare. I like to use walnuts which I'll show you later. So the first step that we're gonna need to do, we're gonna go ahead and trim this little piece off here, then we're gonna drill out all of these rib nuts, then we're gonna tape off the paint to protect it and start test fitting our fender flare. Got the first flare on there, it looks really, really good. Uh, it's loosely fit on here right now, so we could peel that tape off in because we still have to take the side skirt off. But uh, I'm really happy with how this fit. We just had to move the holes a little bit. When I was boring them out, I kind of had to move some from side to side, up and down, and we got it all to line up. Let me show you the hardware we're using. This is provided to us by uh, Downstar Hardware. I'm gonna put a link to their website in the description. They have great hardware for everything on your car, but specifically for wide body, I love to use them because uh, they, they use a well nut uh, with a beauty washer and a nice Allen nut combo. Walnuts are these little rubber guys, you drill a hole for them, you put them into your car, and then as you screw down on them, it will expand in the back and expand into it. I really like these because they're much less likely to cross thread on you, and they're, they're easier to work with because you can kind of come at them from more angles, and they're a little bit more forgiving. So for any wide body kit, I highly suggest using Walnuts, and Downstar Hardware is the place to get those. So, next thing I gotta do is come in here, I gotta trim this up right here, so that's right, fasten the bumper down to this, and then we gotta position position the last little uh, last piece that goes here, uh, drill the holes and install it. Uh, last little piece on there and I tested the gas cap out and it clears by like a millimeter. <laughs> so that was a close one. So that side is all done. Uh, while I've been working on that, Kyle has been kicking ass on the door over here and uh, he's ready to put the door glass in. It is a new day, so I brought the door glass this time. So he's gonna go ahead and install this uh, center mechanism, the door glass, the up top mechanism, and then pop our paneling back on. All right, I jumped over to the driver's side and got this first over fender done. Uh, just kind of scoping out the space that we need to cut. You gotta make a real big cut over here. I also bolted the uh, upper part of this bumper metal into the metal up here. Just a nice little uh, metal on metal with one of those U-clip um, screws. That way we had a nice firm connection before I, uh, before I go ahead and trim this piece off. While I was doing that, Kyle wrapped up the door. So we got the glass in and uh, as you guys saw in the video, just buttoned all the other parts up, put all new pins and plastics in the uh, in the door panel itself as well, and uh, bolted it back down. So that's looking good. We're not gonna um, install this quite yet because uh, we gotta work on the side skirt area over here and it'll be a little bit easier without the door on it. So I'm gonna move over to the front section now and keep plugging away at this. I'm gonna trim this, uh, map out the spot that this next piece goes on here and install it.
All right, I just finished up on the second front piece. It looks pretty great. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Uh, on one of these, the well nut really wasn't able to sink in just because it was under so much pressure. But remember, if you got something where you can access the backside, like I can literally just reach my hand around the back here, just throw a nut on the back of that with a big washer and you'll be good to go. That's what I did on that. And this is done. So you guys have seen me do the back end on one side and the front end on one side and walk you through it. We're just gonna repeat the process now on the back end over here and the front end over here. We got the front passenger side on. Got the uh, the wheels kind of test fit here. Uh, we just a lot of people have been commenting about the wheels. Seen them in the background and stuff. Uh, these are um, the only two that we have. The other two are being remade and I don't have them yet. But don't worry, I've got a plan. So that front side is done and the rear side is done as well. This poor side skirt's gotta get cleaned up, but it shall soon. And that's it. We have wide bodyified, re-wide bodied the GTR. And uh, I think we, we saved $22,000 by buying our uh, Liberty Walk kit. Um, you know, not from Liberty Walk. Sorry, guys. All right, guys, that is a wrap. But before you go, Kyle, hit me with the brick. I got a giveaway going on. This is a lot of money. It actually looks like a lot more money. This is $1,000 in ones because they just look more impressive that way and it's kind of fun to play with. This is a thousand bucks cash and I'm gonna give it away to a subscriber. That's it, you don't have to buy anything. There's no purchase necessary. This is a global giveaway so you can be anywhere in the entire world as long as I can PayPal you this money or mail you a brick of cash, you can be entered. There's a link in the description down below. Hey guys, me from the future here. Uh, one small, very important detail about the giveaway. Uh, the way we were gonna do it, we're not allowed to do it. So whatever I just said, uh, you know, don't mind that. Uh, YouTube has basically said you're not allowed to do giveaways through any type of third party site that verifies subscriptions or video views or anything like that, because they don't want people falsely boosting their numbers. Well, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to get people that watch my show to subscribe. So I'm still allowed to give uh, money away to my subscribers, I'm just not allowed to verify it on that website. So, I'm still gonna give a thousand dollars away. Where's my brick of a thousand dollars? We're still giving away this money. Ooh, it's hot, it's right off the heater. We're giving away this brick of a thousand dollars to one of my subscribers. More details to come in the next episode. The giveaway date, March 17th, St. Patty's Day, when I hope to have 800K. Back to the normal footage. The reason I'm doing this is I really want to hit 800K by Patty's Day. I think it's fun. So it's a 800K by Patty's Day $1,000 giveaway. And if I can find more stuff that rhymes, I might give that away as well. <laughs> Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I don't have to ask you to subscribe now because I already did that. Uh, please like the video and have a great one. I'll see you on the next one. Peace! <laughs>